How are you all, my friends? In my channel, Math CNT, I'm starting a new series of videos called Calculus One Lectures with many done examples. Also, there is a new playlist called Calculus One Solved Questions to help you understand the lectures better. Now, this first lecture will be an overview for the previous courses, the complete algebra course and complete pre-calculus course. You can visit them anytime you like. So this is lecture number one in Calculus One lectures, Introduction to Calculus One. The objectives in this lecture will be mathematical modeling, which is very important, where we get a function from an application or real life problem. We look at the graphs, domains, and shifting, zeros of a function, transcendental functions, and transcendental equations. Now, definition of a function we have seen in the algebra course, lecture 27. If you need to review, a function from set A to set B is a relation that assigns to each element in A exactly one element image in B. So we can think of a function as a machine. We have the X values, the input, which we call them the domain, and the Y values are the output, or we call them the range. Functions we can see everywhere. We can see function is one quantity that depends on another like we can see the height here, depends on the age, that's a function. We can see the temperature, depending on the date. And we can see also the area of a circle is a function of its radius. So we can write A of R is equal pi R squared. Now this formula here, the difference quotient, we have seen in the algebra course and it will be used in the calculus so many times. f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h, you will see that. Now mathematical modeling is when we have a real life problem or applied problem, then we can generate, we can create a function out of that and we can study it. We will see here very nice example about modeling a rectangular box with a square base has a volume 125 inch cubed. Express its total surface area, let's call it capital A, as a function of the edge of its base. Now try to read this, try to understand it. I will do a little sketch here before I show you the solution. We have a rectangular box like this. The base here is a square, so this is x and this is x. See this one here? The base is a square. The whole volume is 125 inch cubed. And this is the y here is the height. We need to express the total surface area. So the area of all the sides here as a function of the length x of its base. So how do we start? We have here four faces. All of them will be rectangle. One face, one face, all the sides. So the width is X and the length is the Y here. And we have the top is a square and the bottom is a square. So if we need the area, we can say the area of the top, which is X and X will be X squared. The area of the bottom here is a square also. It will be X times X. Four faces, we have x times y, so it will be 4xy. So the total area we need is 2x squared plus 4xy. Here we have two variables, we have to leave only one variable. But we know the volume is the area of the base times the height here. So the area of the base is x squared times the y. This is v. v is given 125. So from here we can find y. y will be 125 divided by x squared, we can see that here. We replace y there 
and we get the area 2x squared plus 4x times the y value 125 over x squared and then we can multiply this cancel the x here multiply four times 125 so the function a the total surface area function will be 2x squared plus 500 over x we will see this question later in the lectures when we find maximum and minimum also we need to use the equation of a line so many times this is in the algebra course lecture 21 you know to find the equation of the line we need to use this equation y minus y1 is equal m times x minus x1 x1 y1 is the point on the line and m is the slope also we can use the parallel lines here the same slope and perpendicular lines the product of the slopes is minus one you can remember that now this is algebra course lecture number 28 we have seen basic functions we will use many of these many many of these in this course you can check these eight functions and basic functions and their graphs please also we will see the uh, parabola here ax squared plus bx plus c this is lecture number 34 in the algebra course the parabolas and also if we have a function like this we can write it in standard form we find the vertex one minus three and then we draw it we see the maximum minimum etc also we have to use the zeros of a polynomial function and other functions so this is in the algebra course lecture 35 and 37 the zero means it's a value x or c where we replace it in the function and the answer should be zero like this simple example f of x is equal to x minus six that's a straight line if we say find the zero we put y equal to zero and then we find x will be three now zeros can be real zeros or complex zeros important note here the real zeros are the x intercepts only the real zeros are the x intercepts composition of two functions we have seen in the algebra course lecture number 33 we will use that here in this course also composition another way we can have function of a function f circle g of x means f of g of x x will be replaced in g and then whole g is replaced in the f transcendental functions are not algebraic functions not like parabola polynomial straight line so these functions are supernatural functions you can call them some people they say high class functions like exponential functions logarithmic functions trigonometric functions and many other functions so we can review that very quickly here so the exponential function it was a pre-calculus course lectures two and three this is exponential everything you need there if you need to review this is logarithmic function pre-calculus course lecture number four remember in the logarithmic we have increasing if the base is bigger than one and we have decreasing function if the base is between zero and one now here we see the laws of logarithms which we have seen in the pre-calculus course lecture number six there are the conditions here u should be positive v is positive a the base is positive a cannot be one and any real number n so we have the product law log base a of u times v will be this one here that's an example the quotient law will be log base a of u over v there is a subtraction here and that's an example and we have the power trigonometric functions we use them a lot also we have seen in pre-calculus course lectures 11 and 13 the sine of theta y over r the cosine of theta x over r tangent and cotangent secant and cosecant remember r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared now the graph of the sine function we have seen in pre-calculus course lecture number 15 we will use them in this course also all these graphs the uh, graph of the cosine it was mentioned in lecture 16 
of the pre-calculus course and the graph of the tangent, it was mentioned in lecture 17. Remember that? So this is the x-intercept of the tangent and this is the vertical asymptotes of the tangent where the cosine is zero. Now, transcendental equations are equations that include transcendental functions. It's not easy to solve, but most of the time we ask for the number of solutions or we use other ways to solve it. We will see that in the course. Transcendental equations can have infinitely many solutions or finite number of solutions or no solutions. Here we have uh, one example. We will see the solution in the next slide. 3x plus 13 is equal 7 to the power x. We need the number of solution. This one tan 1 over 6x is equal minus square root of 10 over the interval minus 3 pi to 12 pi. The complete solution you can see in the pre-calculus course lecture number 17. So when we have transcendental equations, we put f of x is equal g of x. And then we take the first one on the left, function y equals f of x. And the second one, we take y equal g of x. And we find the intersection points. See this one, 3x plus 13, that will be a straight line. 7 to the power x will be exponential function. That's the black. And we see here there are two points in the intersection. That means there are two solutions. Big, big advice. In case you need to review any topic in algebra or pre-calculus, what do you do? Three steps. Choose the topic or the subject or the idea that you need to review it. Search in one of the playlists. There are two important playlists, complete algebra course, 39 lectures, complete pre-calculus course, 40 lectures. And then you can just watch the video that you have chosen. This is the end of lecture one in Calculus One course. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I hope I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you guys for listening.